Welcome to a special Blood and Pigment Faction review. I'm Joseph. I am Guy. And I'm Dan. Get ready for a showdown as we compare the might of the Spanish, Dutch, English, and French Royal Naval Factions. These four factions were all introduced in No Peace Beyond the Line, and even though each has unique faction rules and units, they are similar enough that we couldn't help but put them all together in one mega review. These four factions represent the might of the respective nations in the Caribbean during the 17th century. And because of the tactics that they were all using in Europe, their what we see as factions are uh, pretty similar. All of them have uh, similar bonuses and unit compositions. Yeah, so the navies, uh, all four of these factions, you're going to see a lot of the core uh, unit filled by the um, sailor unit of each nationality. And then the professional soldier unit comes up a lot as well. Those are going to be your bread and butter for all these factions. They all focus quite a bit on cannons. Yes, they do. Decent boarding as well. Some better than others. Yeah. When a, a nice little bit of trivia is all of them have Enterplogue as a support model. <laughs> Hired out to everyone. I mean, when you have the best, other people are going to want some. Just saying. <laughs> they all have a bonus to be the attacker as well. So uh, that's a big bonus. Most of them have a plus four, if I recall correctly. All Not except all. the Dutch. Okay. And plus four is the best bonus in the game, or, you know, the best one like, if you want to be the attacker. Yeah, I don't like being an attacker, so I don't like that bonus, but sometimes it's better, especially on naval games. Uh, land is usually. These factions are also great for when you want to play a large sea game. These being the, the navies of the respective uh, nations. Uh, are great when you want to play 350 points or do a army scale sea game with multiple ships fighting each other or just one ship that has a bunch of guys on it. Each of these factions have commanders that are historic commanders or legendary commanders that are tailor-made for commanding a fleet. And you often want to load out all your ships with cannons so that eats up points pretty fast. So the more points the more fun, basically. Yeah, this is basically, if you want to play a fleet-based game, kind of like Oak and Iron, but in Blood and Plunder scale, that's what these factions are made for. I think some of them are quite good at smaller levels, too, but they are excellent at a large scale. Now, one thing that we've talked about in other faction overviews is uh, when we mention a C, uh, a C uh, faction, is we'll say, well, you could, these are the commanders that are good for cannons. These are the commanders that are good for boarding. But in a larger game and kind of for these navies, that really doesn't mean a lot because the more points you put on a ship, the more it's going to be really just cannons that you want to use all the time because you might board eventually. But if you board in the beginning of the game, you're going to have your entire force wiped out as all of their fresh units on their ship counterattack you. You can destroy yeah. your force pretty fast and get messy if you do your fresh force straight into their fresh force. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, coming from someone who loves boarding, I definitely do not want to board a ship while they're fresh. I am not a sporting character. I want to weaken you up before I charge you. Especially if you grapple at the wrong time and you grapple the front of your ship to the front of their ship and they have their cannon crew that's still assigned in their rear ship, they can still fire at your ship <laughs> while they're close, while you're you're trying to push units up to the front. Yeah, I've had that happen. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Point blank cannons hurt. We'll just put it like that. Yes, they do. Before getting into each faction, let's go over the differences between each of their sailor units. Yeah, these sailor units really define the faction since it's, in some cases, your only core unit for some of these. And some of the time, 
it's going to be the only unit type that you run in a list. Is going to be the the sailor and cannons and a ship. Yep, it works. So I'll start with the Spanish sailor model, which is the Marinero. This is a four point model, or three points if you take away their pistol. Its a uh, fight score is five and seven, so a seven save and a fight five fight, and its shoot score is seven and seven which all of these models that we're going to talk about have a 7 and a 7. The uh, resolve of this one is of the Marineros is 5, just like all Sailor models. And what sets this one apart is it gets ruthless, but also poorly equipped. And the basic artillery crew and sailors. Kind of Marineros is the, the worst sailor out of all of them. <laughs> Yeah, they can hit pretty hard in a melee, but the poorly equipped will apply to pistols or muskets, and they don't have expert anything. They're pretty much the weakest all around. I agree. Ruthless is something that activates somewhat out of your control, and it's not something you can always control all the time. While it's passive, well, yes, you could technically get a 4 if it activates. It's not always going to activate when you want it to. That being said, Ruthless is the only way any of these guys can get down to a six shoot for muskets if you put muskets on the guys. So they're that is basically a upgraded militia. You can give them <laughs> muskets yeah. and then they become <laughs> decent shots. A lot more survivable <laughs> than Milicianos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you compare them to the Zilaiden, how do they shake down? So it's kind of not a fair contest because out of the core ones, I would argue that Zelaiden are kind of the best. So they don't hit as hard. Their fight is 6-6. Six, six. Their, shoot, their shoot is 7-7. Seven, seven. Their resolve is 5. You know, the 6 fight may look a little meh, but they come with hard chargers on top of expert artillery crew and expert sailors. So when you charge, it's going to drop down to a 5. And even if you take away their pit, their pit, their pistols, they're still fairly competent in there. I would argue that point for point, they would be the best. So it's not even really a fair contest because the Mar the Marians are just Marineros. Excuse me, the Marineros are just they're they're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty good as far as Spanish units go, but you know how my opinion on that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's <laughs> <lighting> great. <laughs> the Sea Dogs are very similar. They have the same exact stat line, if I could recall correctly. 6-6 six, six for the fight, 7-7 seven, seven for the shoot, and 5 resolve. Um, they have Brawlers, which is an extra die roll if you get a 10 in melee. And then Expert Artillery Crew and Sailors. So they're kind of the same as this Aliden, except they have downgraded versions of this Aliden rules. Um, I think the English Navy makes up for it in some of their rules, which we'll get to later. But they are a Good artillery crew unit who's uh, survivable in melee, but not that aggressive. And round down the list, the last one is the Marines, which are the French sailor model. They have the same stats as the Marineros. They have a five fight, a seven fight save, and seven, seven, five, just like all the other sailors. They have hard chargers, just like the Zelaiden. So, and what makes them the, they're known to be the most uh, aggressive or the best boarding sailor, just because that five fight and hard chargers drops their, their fight during a charge to a four, which is a, a great number to have. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> they have the, uh, the one worse save for fight than the Zelaiden with a seven instead of a six. So you're going to lose a model. 60% uh, of the time instead of 50% of the time. And they do not have the expert artillery crew or expert sailors that the Salidan does have. So they just want to hit hard and be done with it, <laughs> which they can do. Hopefully hit hard and not, and hit hard enough that there's no one left to hit back. That's right. Be done with yeah, it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're glass dead. cannons. So they're still, they're solid. I've used them before. You know, they're slightly suicidal. I think Mike Tunez described all the French units as slightly suicidal because of their lower saves. But they, they hit hard. There is no doubt. It hurts. 
Even as mm-hmm. Biden, it hurts to get charged by Marins. So we've listed all the sailors. Out of all of them, I think we can all agree that the the most the best one point for point is the Zelaiden, right? Yep, I'm on board there. You can't hear it, but I'm clapping my clogs in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> So those are going to shape the um, character of these navies. Let's go over each one and talk about what makes it unique. And just as an overview, we have the Armada de Balavento for the Spanish, the English Royal Navy, the French Royal Navy, and the Dutch Navy. So I'll start with the only one of these that isn't a Royal Navy, (laughs) which is the Armada de Barlovento. This uh, and I, it is not a navy because instead it is a fleet of ships that Spain commissioned for uh, use in um, the Caribbean. It has a, a really nice history. They are uh, they were characterized by the Pirate History Podcast of the boogeymen for pirates because they would always be worried that the the windward fleet was close that was their nickname the windward fleet because they would always come from a windward direction and they have a a huge history of losing against pirates which is kind of interesting <laughs> for for a boogeyman that always loses uh but this was a fleet that had uh upwards of 50 ships the 50 ships would usually the ships would usually stay near each other and would usually also be in harbor a lot of the time because to save cost, because Spain didn't pay its sailors when they were in harbor. So uh, to start with, the Armada de Barlovento uh, gets a plus four when attacking, and all of its veteran models or units in the force get expert sailors and expert artillery crew. So Dados in this force also gain support marineros. And it has two force options, which is uh, naval gunners, which is kind of worthless. Uh, ignore that when you see it and just blink it out. And naval landing force, which means if you decide to not carry, uh, bring any size two ships or larger, soldados lose the support marineros rule. So the what this faction has is three core models, which are the or core units, which is the marineros. Soldados, which are the the soldier model for the uh, Spanish Empire, and Marineros Piqueros, which Marineros Piqueros are the only reason to play this faction, really. <laughs> uh, they are, we didn't mention them in the lineup of all the other sailor models because they don't really, they don't really match the other ones. Um, they don't have they're pretty they're basically marineros with uh lances instead of pistols. They're four points each and they have a six shoot save. And that is that sick that fact they have lances and a six shoot save is what makes them good. Because if you put them in a ship, they're saving on fives, which means that you're saving sixty percent of the time. And with lances as a weapon, it's better they're Lances are better than uh, pistols part, uh, part of the time. You can't do a ranged attack, but lances are always on, whereas pistols, once you fire them once, you don't get to use them again until you use two actions on them. And lances make it so you get a defensive attack. Uh, if you get charged, you get a defensive attack. If you charge and somebody charges you, and they're they're really good. Um, I've used Marineros Piqueros and why I'm talking about the Armada de Barlovento is I've used the Marineros Piqueros in a turtle galleon where you put these guys in the hold of the galleon uh, in the gun deck and they're saving on threes <laughs> which is uh, is really fun to play. Uh, maybe not nice to not your opponent. To play against, but... <laughs> I, I've never actually played a human yet <laughs> with that. So I just have to take it on advisement that it's not a good list to run against people. But uh this this faction it's it's a lot of fun. You're not it it's uh 
its special rule of giving all of the units with that are veterans, expert sailors, and expert artillery crew. It's kind of a waste because if you want to give Meg Marineros veterans, then they're five points each. And because you can't take away a pistol. And um, if you want to make Marineros Piqueros veterans, it's five points each. And if you start doing that, then you run out of room to buy cannons, which is the reason why you would want expert artillery crew. <laughs> Yeah, I've done that a couple times, run veterans, but it does make it much more expensive. You just end up with less cannons. like that's, Or smaller that's like, cannons. Or just a yeah. smaller force than your end opponent. Yeah. So it's, it's really the only thing that this uh, faction go has going for it, like I said, is the uh, Mariner's Piqueros is a core model. This is the only one, I believe, that has Mariner's Piqueros as a core model. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that you can do is Soldaten uh, or Soldados. Uh, those guys are pretty good. Uh, they have a nice combination of expertly drilled and ruthless, which expertly drilled when activated on a spade or heart, it makes the opponent do roll an extra uh, resolve if you hit them. And ruthless triggers on extra on attacking an opponent that has more uh, fatigue than in yours. So using the soldados, you can pile fatigue up really easily. They're also a great model to make veterans because of that. Because you can uh, reload twice and then use a command point to command them to do a drilled shot. So there, the, uh, the Armada is nice, but it is not I would say the top dog as far as the uh, naval factions go. No, I've used them quite a bit. My forces usually look like one good command unit of soldados, one unit of marineros, piqueros from the front on swivel guns because they're going to get the brunt of the incoming fire when that six save keeps them in the game a long time. And cheap marineros with master gunner and all the cannons. That's not bad, but it's not mm -hmm. top tier either. It, it's hard to pay for that veteran C and then after that, it's pretty generic. I've talked about that too. Having uh, having the pokey front is yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, how about the command options? Any good command options there to make them unique? Well, the the naval landing force to do you can do all soldados if you're going to do a ground force. And I said uh, command options. Oh, command options. Yeah, the um, the best one is probably going to be Andres de Ocha y Zarate. Uh, he is only 20 points and comes with Feeble, which is a, a kind of fun ability that means he might die in the middle of the game. But he's only 20 points and has three command points, broadside, Commodore, and Inspiring. Yeah, I like using him. He's a risky fellow, but he gives you a lot of early game power. Yeah, he does. And and when he dies, you uh, nominate a extra model to become an untested commander. It doesn't even punish you fully for losing your commander. It's kind of right. fun. Uh, Peralta, Francisco de Peralta, is also a lot of fun. He is 28 points for broadside, very inspiring, and determination, which determination makes changes all of your uh, ruthless guys to tough guys. So, and that's, that's actually really fun. Uh, having a whole force of tough is really powerful. I played against you with that guy, and I hate that peril to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a pretty good uh, form to play this force in. Yeah, with uh, Peralta. Yeah, yeah. Tough does nothing for your Marineros on their cannons because, uh, or sorry, Ruthless doesn't apply to cannons. So sw swapping that out for Tough is definitely a boom. Ruthless doesn't apply to swivels either. So, right. like it. it really only works on the charge with a uh, gun crew. And then uh, Mateo Perez de Gora, he's another one that's uh, 30 points, so you're getting up there. He has a special ability to get, make a uh, galleon or flute. Um, it gives it heavily built, which galleons come with heavily built anyways. But he has the extra bonus of if your ship does not take any hits, any damage from an attack because of heavily built, then you can ignore lucky hits, which that's really unique. Um, 
That's powerful. Yeah. I really like this guy. He's almost a leg- legendary, really. He has very inspiring, expert broadside, sailing master, and tough. Kind of I know. Me, see. And a 16-inch command range means that he can, even without Commodore, command a fleet pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good commanders for this faction, really. Yeah. Should we compare it with the Dutch Navy? Let's see. Yeah, let's see what the Dutch brings to the table. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sorry. I'm about to blow your little fleet out of the water there, guy. No. So so what we have with the Dutch Navy is out of all the naval factions, these are my favorite. I'm going to be as objective as possible, but I absolutely love these guys. So all the ships in the forest gain shallow draft. Joseph really needs that because he has a superpower where he finds shoals. So, hey, with this force, I still beached sloops. I've done it. I have no words for you, sir. (laughs) (laughs) So, if you're not Joseph, the shallow draft rule is really good. It basically will usually, on small ships, even larger ships, I've had it saved by six rate once or twice, but it'll save you from getting on those horrible shoals and having to waste actions to get off the shoal. Then, the force adds a plus two to its roll when determining the attacker. So while the other ones have four, the Dutch do clock in at two. I was thinking about it before we were recording, and it's probably because out of all of them, these guys were the smallest, like, comparatively. Yeah. Like, they were the smallest of all the navies, so it makes sense, historically, that they wouldn't tend to be the attacker if they're being engaged by the English Royal Navy, especially if you're doing an Anglo-Dutch war kind of theme. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, just thought of that off the top of my head. All right. And then... This force has two different options you can take. You can take Z-Landers, which is really good for boarding. It says when attacked by a unit that is six inches away or less, units in this force may re-roll a single fill fatigue death die resulting from the attack. It gives you some staying power. And also, you know, it'll always go off if you're boarding. And then they got Ships of the Horn. Again, my favorite. All ships in this force have the heavily built ship trait. You want a heavily built bark? There you go. You want a fleet of heavily built barks? There you go. All the small... I find this really, really matters in small games of light cannons because heavily built is a game changer with light cannons. Medium cannons, it can be like an inconvenience. Heavy cannons, it doesn't exist. (laughs) (laughs) And this is a really, really versatile force. I mentioned it in the article, so I'll try not to belabor a point, but they are really good on cannons, and they are really good for boarding. They have everything you want. They got expert expert artillery crew, and they got hard chargers. That's all you really need to run a nice seagoing list, because even if you get boarded, you can hit back just as hard when you charge, and if you're doing the boarding, you're going to hit hard when you swing in. Their command options are pretty good. The experienced Dutch Sea Commander clocks in at a beautiful 15 points, 8-inch command range, to command points. He's got broadside and strict. They have strict, which is amazing. It gives you a minus 1 bonus when rolling a test during the commander's activation. However, it costs you a point of fatigue. So if you really, really need to hit that broadside, or you really, really need to make that grapple, it'll let you do that. And then aside from him, we have Jacob. What did we what did we decide the pronunciation was? Binkus. Was Binkus. Yeah, I almost said Binks, but I would have gotten destroyed for that. We have Jacob Binks, 30 points, 16 inch command rage, three command points. It's really good. He's got Commodore inspiring and expert expert broadside. He's really awesome, but I think that he really gets outshined by our favorite, Admiral Crimson. <laughs> He's basically the same kind of commander, but slightly better. He's got Commodore, very inspiring, and expert broadside, but then he has Sailing Master, which if you're doing a large point game, you're going to have to do repairs. You'll probably have to be moving, depending on how fast your ships are. It's just, it's really nice. I like having Sailing Master. I do a lot of checks when I play, because I like to move around and use the wind, tack, and do all that wonderful nautical nonsense that makes this game great. And then capstoning our command options is Piet Hayen. He is 40 points, because he's their legendary commander, 20-inch command range, and three command points. 
He comes stock with Broadside, Commodore, God's Blessing, or Devil's Luck, which means you get four fortune points, very inspiring, bold, and indomitable. If you attach this guy to a group of Enter Plug and send them over the rail, there's not a whole lot that's going to stop him. He's quite the commander. Like, if Piet Hayen really gets, his, gets his beautifully buckled boot on your deck, just throw your weapons down. Just, just stop. You're, you're done. done. <laughs> Indomitable is amazing because if the unit begins to shake in it, it merely removes a point of fatigue. It's like tough, but a little better. This would leave it with two points of fatigue or less. It is no longer shaken. It may take actions normally. Again, if he leads over a group of venture plug, there's not a whole lot to stop him. He's one of the few commanders that I feel comfortable waiting into the fray with. Scary to send a 42-point commander into the fray, isn't it, though? Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, he, he can handle it. Yeah, he's one of the few who can handle it. He's not going to drop from a heart attack like, you know, someone else. So, overall, what this leaves you is with a faction that, like I said, can do cannon stuff or can do boarding stuff. And if you're playing a large point game, you don't have to create a force to do both. They can do both. Yeah, they seem the most flexible. Yeah, that is their that is their claim to fame is they are super flexible. Units are the same. You got a Zelaiden, Enter Ploeg, best boarding party in the game, by the way, on that Enter Ploeg. Mwah. Then Soldaten, European Sailors, and Capers. They got a solid little list of units, and it's really simple. You're generally going to be running z and in Antropologue, though. I believe they have the largest core unit selection of these four factions we're talking about. They do. Both European Sailors and Antropologue as core, whereas all the other ones get, you know, if they have European Sailors, their uh, support instead of core. Right. So yeah, overall, I mean, this is a really solid faction. Again, it's my favorite, and it's so versatile, and it doesn't. It's really easy to play. That is probably my favorite feature. Is it is so easy to play. You don't got to worry about kidding out of force to do what you want to do. You could throw a bunch of Zelaiden on a six rate with no swords and or no pistols. Excuse me. And yeah, you want to let them keep their swords? <laughs> I don't know. I think drop your swords, man. Everybody gets braces of pistols today. <laughs> 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 but you take away their pistols or three points apiece and they will rain down hate on the enemy ship and if they're foolish enough to get too close to you you can feel pretty comfortable hopping over and doing what Zelaiden do best kind of hard so to that, play them wrong isn't it yeah you'd have to be really you'd have to you'd have to be someone who's really good on land and really bad at sea battles to mess them up <laughs> so what do you got for us Joseph let's look at the English Navy quite a bit different faction i think um maybe the most unique of the factions uh they get a plus four bonus like the other couple we're gonna talk about and then their special rule is what i really like about them all sea dog and english militia units in this force gain the tough special rule so at the end of every activation you get to drop a fatigue unless you voluntarily took a fatigue during the activation um makes them Really good for the long haul. Their units keep going, keep dropping that fatigue without having to take actions to rally that off. Uh, I think that's the best perk about this faction, but let's keep looking. Their core unit selection is very minimal with only Sea Dogs. Support units have their Musketeers, their um, soldier unit, Zelaiden, English Militia, and Interplug. But again, you're going to be mostly taking Sea Dogs. Command options are the naval commanders, which I th believe, yeah, they zero cost has broadside, which is unusual. So you can run a pretty cheap force and still get your two deck broadside with the zero cost. And then Charles Carlyle and Thomas Sprague. Um, Sprague is a 30 cost, three point, three command point commander with very inspiring Commodore and expert broadside. So he really amps up your um, cannon stuff with your expert broadside and your fatigue management about 30 points is considerable and then charles carlisle is 25 point um two command point and he has inspiring expert broadside and tough so kind of just a junior version of the same thing tough is more than we need since everybody has tough 
I personally really like this faction. I think it works really well as a small unit or as a, a small force or as a large force. And I enjoy playing it. Should we move on to the French? Yes, we should. The French is one of my favorite. The French Navy is one of my favorite factions. And I like it because... It has a lot of its uh, faction abilities have a lot of history in them. This force gets a plus four when determining attacker, just like uh, th some of the other navies that we've talked about. All trained and veteran forces in it also get brawlers, which we've lambasted brawlers before. But the cool thing about that is all core units in this force already have hard chargers. <laughs> so <laughs> hard chargers and brawlers like it's it's good together <laughs> yeah you already have hard chargers you can't get hard chargers again you but brawlers uh helps especially if your fight is down to a four that means that your brawlers is gonna hit your extra brawlers dice if you roll a 10 is gonna hit 70 percent of the time that increases its value a lot the uh, next ability actually has a lot of history in it uh, once per game, this force may re-roll the result of a critical or lucky hit against an opposing ship's rigging. Now, that kind of seems random when you first read it, but you have to understand that the French Navy, uh, at the time, their naval doctrine that they adapted was to always stay downwind of the uh, opposing force because they wanted to prioritize the mission uh bef above anything else so because they were usually downwind of the english when they fought the english or anybody else their the wind would push their ship up so they were more likely to hit the opponent ship the opponent's rigging because the guns were elevated right <laughs> yeah their guns were elevated and and uh what is it cantered ca cambered up um and that uh, as opposed to the the english had a habit had a reputation for great bot broadsides hitting the uh, deck of a ship or not the deck but the uh, side of the ship or below the water line because they would usually be upwind so their for their ship would uh hit lower than uh the french so that's where this faction ability comes from uh the french also had a it's they still do if you read through uh the historical sources uh, they have a reputation for being cowards at sea, but that's because of their naval doctrine at the time to prioritize the mission above everything else, whereas the English and other people they fought would want to fight and want to <laughs> want a, a, a cannon duel, whereas the French would sail away and go do what they were supposed to instead. <laughs> the French Na Royal Navy did get a lot of wins during the area, uh, but they also had a absolute monarch that would demand that ships go out and die when he wanted them to. So that meant that led to some losses. Going into the units that this faction gets, the core units are Marines and Infantry. Marines we've talked about, uh, and Infantry is the other core model. It's uh, the soldier using the European soldier model. And these guys are great. They have a five fight and a seven fight save. So those are the same numbers as the Marin. And they have a six shoot and a six shoot save, along with a five resolve. The, the reason why you would bring these guys on a ship is that five shoot save. That's going to drop to a five, or I mean that, that six shoot save is going to drop to a five with the hardcover of a ship, which means that they're going to save 60% of the time and be hard to deal with for your opponent. In addition to that, they have hard chargers, just like Marines, and brawlers in this faction as well. And they also have expertly drilled, just like the other soldier models. These guys are a lot of fun. They are six points of models, so you don't really load up on them. But they're they're good to have as a uh, support for your cannons. The support models that you get are Macelles de Caribes, which are kind of the best to take because they're uh, four four points or five points each, and they uh, are well armed. They have a reputation for being excessively well armed because they have a buccaneer <laughs> gun, uh, a sword, plug bayonets, and a sidearm pistol. Little Rambo's. Yeah. 
So they have their uh, they do have bad scores. They have a seven fight and seven fight save, <laughs> and a but they have a six shoot. So mm-hmm. even though they're militia, they have a good shoot score. And combined with those buccaneer guns and drilled, you can really you can really put some hurt on the opponent as well. And uh, even though they have a bad fight, uh, plug bayonets kind of changes that game because if you get enough hits, that uh, plug bayonets really force your opponent into a bad situation. For commanders for this force, they have uh, one of the best characters in the, or best commanders in the game with uh, Lawrence de Graff. I love him. He has 42 points, and he comes with Swordsman, because he's a good Swordsman, very inspiring, expert broadside, Sailing Master, and probably one of the best abilities in the game, Felicitous, which is a every turn that you start without any fortune points, you get a fortune point. Free fortune. So if you use all three fortune the first turn, which I've done, uh, it means that you get eight fortune that whole game because there's five turns after that. <laughs> uh, he's a lot of fun. He's so much fun. Um, Sailing Master helps. Expert Broadside helps. Very Inspiring helps. All of these are good things to have on a ship. Uh, he's actually better in his own faction because his own faction makes all of your Marines into expert gunners or expert artillery crew. Mm-hmm. But in addition to him, there is the uh, Jean Commit de Esters. He is the, the, at the time, he was the, um, the main admiral of the French force, I believe. Uh, and he has three command points for 30 points. Uh, broadside, Commodore, and very inspiring. Uh, not, not a lot going on with him. Um, He's kind of just a good commander, uh, a little bit boring with the broadside and Commodore, and very inspiring. He'll, he's just a very solid in what he does. The uh, other unique commander you get is uh, Pierre Lemon de Iberville for 30 points, has three command points at a 12-inch range, and this guy kind of does anything, everything. He has uh, scouts, Broadside, Commodore, Inspiring, Elan, and Cold-Blooded. Cold-Blooded gives him Ruthless, and anybody he uses a command point on also to also gets Ruthless if they make a fight or shoot uh, action. So on a ship, he has a 24-inch range because of Commodore. And that means that any boarding actions that you might take or, or volleys you take with, with muskets that he tells them to do it, they'll, you'll get Ruthless on, which is kind of nice. He has a habit. He, uh, he appears in a lot of French factions. Um, <laughs> and he's, he's kind of... He's really good. Uh, he's 30 points is a lot. All of the special commanders are expensive. At 30 points or 42 points. So you do have the untested commander that comes with broadside for free. And the experience one that comes with broadside and inspiring for 15 points. So why why are the French good when when the Dutch are you know there? Uh, you play the French because you want to either use one of the commanders like Lord Hoda Graf, or you want to use Marines and infantry. Uh, that's kind of the the option that you're running here. This uh, this faction can also do. One thing that I like doing, where you have the Macelles de Caribes in the uh, forecastle of your ship. So you have a, a kind of like, and I don't even upgrade them to train usually when I do that. You have this uh, this group of musket people in the front that your opponent has to deal with, or they get a bunch of, they get shot by a bunch of militia. Um <laughs> And then it, it takes the heat off of your cannon crude when you do that as well. Because if they're shooting at the... It's kind of um, a worst of two options, where they're either dealing with the you know, 15, 15 or 14 musket guys in the front, or they're dealing with your medium guns. <clears throat> Whichever one they, your opponent focuses on, you get to hit them with the other one. 
and that's uh that's something fun just like usual uh french factions uh it's the the musketry is always there to back you up and this is just a fun faction to do <clears throat> you didn't mention the canadian militia but they're actually the cheapest option for a trained six uh shoot model they're pretty good in there too they are they are they are actually they are really good the only thing i don't like about them is uh elusive and scouts doesn't do anything on a ship they're not drilled that's right yeah uh they are really good though and i would not discount them uh i don't own a lot of i don't own any uh canadian militia so i haven't really used them a lot I haven't proxied them in. They're one that I haven't proxied in. But they're a good choice, too, because for four points, you have a trained model with marksmen. And Six ships feet. ships on, or models on a ship, units on a ship, do not move around a lot. So you, marksmen or drilled is actually useful if you get uh, those shots off to uh, to really get some, some great hits in. This is kind of, they have Interplogue as an option, but with Marines, you don't really need the Interplogue because mm -hmm. it's better to take two Marines for every Interplogue and just load up on your boarding force that way. Yeah, I would say this is the jump in and kill everybody in one fell swoop faction. Your Marines and infantry can just hit like a ton of bricks. Mm -hmm. I agree. Also, you know, hang back and get some shots in while you're closing in. Like, I've done enough cannon duels with this faction that it's a lot of fun. I want to wait for the day with that reroll get to a broken mast on there. Uh, oh, rig yeah. That'd be fun. It's just once per game, though. <laughs> yeah. When I used it against you during our big fleet game, it, it, I think I rolled a, it rolled a one and I had you reroll it and on a lucky hit and it came up as a two. <laughs> so it's like ah. Yeah, I used to think shooting at rigging was silly, but last game we played, you destroyed my rigging, and it was a big pain in the neck. So I got to revisit that. Rigging, going after rigging, is a good tactic in the game. Um, there are some rule crannies right now uh, that make rigging a good thing to go after. Uh, if your opponent has any models in the in a kind of like in a um, fighting platform in a fighting top, you can shoot at their rigging, and it will actually count hits against the models that are in the rigging and the models that are below on the deck. So you get three, yeah. <laughs> you get to two for one that way, which is kind 1. of fun. Five for one, yeah, one point five for one the rigging damage is pretty like what you experience it, it can be really debilitating and it's usually easier to hit rigging than it is the deck of a ship yeah the fortitude is lower a lot lower in some cases not it's for really the good early game move yeah especially when you're at range mm -hmm. the problem is is if you do want to go after the hull then the hull doesn't have any damage so it still has a high uh fortitude right making no progress well, we did it. We looked at them all. I think the time has come, though. We need to rate these factions. The showdown. I say we start at the bottom and then head to the top from there. Because I think it's pretty clear who we think the worst one. <laughs> so you want me to move are. So you want me to move the Armada to the bottom, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. So I will rate the Armada. Uh, the Armada is going to be 6 out of 10. It is... 10 out of 10 if you're using the cheesy Turtle Galleon list, because I don't think that thing can lose. But it is 6 <laughs> out of 10 lances for the Armada de Barlovento. Yeah, they just, like most Spanish factions, they have some weaknesses that it's hard to make up for. So their special abilities kind of just barely cover that in many cases. But I think that Peralta list is quite good with Tough on everyone. Definitely, you can give Tough to your... Marinos, Piqueros, which makes them even worse eh, for That's your true. opponent. Yeah, while well, they have some good points, just overall, you know, unit for unit, they just don't really pack a ton, and they don't have any really helpful special rules. Yeah. Like, at all. <laughs> to get advantage out of those special rules, you have to pay more for them, and then you're paying more for units that don't measure up in many cases already, and then you have a smaller force. Yeah. Just, uh, it's 
Spanish are not the best. So while they have some good some good points, they just their their units don't stack up. And to overcome their weaknesses, you have to dump more points into the force, and that's less points on things you need, like cannons and ships. <laughs> So I think moving on to the French, I rate the French Royal Navy at 7 out of 10. And I do that even though I like the French. There's not enough unique in this faction to play them over the French Buccaneers. It really, French, French Buccaneers overshadows the French Navy, I feel. French Buccaneers overshadow everyone. I'd put them at an 8, I think, just because they are so powerful when they come to melee. But they're very uh, focused on that, I think. So, 7.5 bayonets out of 10. Let's see what Dan does. Is it going to go up to 7.7 or down to 7.7? I think that 7 is a good good rounding point. While they're really good at melee and their musketry can help them, they're pretty lackluster when it comes to cannons. The other two factions have much better cannon crew for that. So, while it's not a huge ding, they're still effective. I definitely don't like being charged by... Marins, let alone Marins with, you know, brawlers and hard chargers. <laughs> so I would give it a solid 7. So we've averaged them out to 7.33 out of 10 bayonets. <laughs> so that's 7 bayonets and what, the bottom of like the, the shaft, like the, not even the pokey end, just the little flat end? <laughs> One guy put the bayonet in backwards. Ooh. <laughs> 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 so that leaves us with the Dutch and the English to fight it out for the top spot. So what about the English? I like them probably the best, but I think that I would put them in the number two spot as far as pure power level because they are pretty much a... Well, the French are a one-trick pony for boarding. The English are one-trick pony for shooting. They aren't very good at melee, so they just need to shoot cannons. Well, the Dutch are more flexible and just as good, basically, at cannons, so problem with the English is they don't have any unit variety. <laughs> they are the most boring to build for. You pretty much sea dogs, sea dogs, sea dogs, sea dogs, and then maybe a militia or musketeer. Or... And they don't have anything that really packs a punch. While the musketeers are good, and the sea dogs are good at cannons, they just, if you get boarded and you need to fight someone off, you don't have the special rules to really, you know, fight them off. Tough will give you staying power. I will give them that. Tough will make them really hard to dislodge at a range. And but once you start closing in, where you're dealing multiple fatigue on someone, like tough, tough is good until you're at four fatigue and it only knocks you down to shaken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they aren't as violent in melee, so I give them that um, eight point nine 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 nine, giving you a clue what I'm going to give the Dutch Navy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give him a solid eight. I don't like to do decimals because I'm bad at math. <laughs> but I think that, again, they're not terrible. You know, they're not a terrible faction at all. I think they're just lacking on what the Dutch really bring to the table. When you directly compare them. Well, they have more staying power. They're just not as flexible. But we'll get into that after Guy rates the English. Because I have some words to say about the Dutch. I'm giving the English a... And eight. The English are really good. A lot of the time when I'm making a cannon list, I will only put the sailors on it too. So I won't really touch those other units because I want to do a cannon duel. And one of the great things I love about Blood and Plunder is uh, if you want to stay away from your opponent the whole game and do a cannon duel, you can do that. And uh, it's hard sometimes if the opponent wants to get really close to you. But if you brought a fast ship... And you can do some tricky maneuvering to make it happen. So I really like that that aspect of uh, you can determine the distance you want to be the whole game. And if they go charging straight for you, maybe you'll get some raking shots in. <laughs> 8.9 cannonballs into the Dutch faces. Rounded to 8.3 after all of our other ratings. <laughs> so that just leaves us with the king of the Royal Navy factions. And not by much. But it is the Dutch Navy. They're like not even I said, loyal. come on. <laughs> I had I have words to say. So yes, while the French are gonna be better at melee than the Dutch, and the English are gonna have more staying power, the beautiful thing about the Dutch is you can do both. You can do you make a list Without for cannons. Trying. 
<laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> they have the access to enter Plaga's core, which if you're going to be really silly and load up on some of those guys, this is the faction to do it. Their command options, Piet Hayen, I would argue, is probably the best commander on the list for his intended purpose. While he's expensive, he is also a legendary commander, and there'll be an article about him on the on Blood and Pigment, so stay tuned I, I for take, that. I take... <laughs> I take a little bit of offense at that. Uh, Loro de Graff's, uh his intention is to dump a bunch of fortune in your lap, and he's perfect at that. <laughs> yeah, he's good. He just, you know, he didn't take down the Spanish treasure fleet. Just, just saying, Piet Hain is the only one to do it. So, go cry in your escargot over there, Frenchie. He he fought two <laughs> ships of the line <laughs> at the same time and won. Didn't take the treasure fleet. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Why would I engage two ships that are much, much bigger than mine? I'm not saying I hate the guy. He's hilarious and I love him. But compared to Piet Hayen, I mean, eh. But yeah, the Dutch are just insanely versatile and they're easy to play. If you build a cannon list, you've inadvertently also built a boarding list. <laughs> and vice versa. If you build and say, hey, I want all these guys to load up on cannons, well, chances are you'll have more than enough Z-Lighten for your boarding list to also man your cannons. And in small games, with light cannons, making a heavily built Corvette is hilarious. It's one of the better of the smaller quote-unquote ships. You know, it doesn't have a lot of durability, and in a game where there's either swivel guns or light cannons, maybe a little bit of both, that heavily built makes that Corvette last a lot longer, and it's silly. They do have a lot going for them. So what would you rate them? I would rate them exactly... We'll go with nine bloody cutlasses. I had them at nine as well, just a hair below the English. Or above the English. <laughs> yeah, they're ahead, but not by not by much. And so we didn't rating have a... all these is a bit subjective because each one has a specialty. So if you want to go for just cannons, I think the English are better. If you want to go for just boarding, I think the French are better. If you want, to, but and then the Dutch are just more flexible. And if you want to lose in the classic Spanish fashion, you can play Spanish. Yeah, I was about to say, I think the consensus we can all agree with on here is Romano de Balavento is bad. <laughs> well, it's not bad as far as Spanish factions go. Except for the one list, if you do all if you do all Marineros Piqueros, you're gonna have a good day. <laughs> like you just need you need to convince your opponent that you can shoot swivel guns from uh from the gun deck. <laughs> gun <corners. laughs> I wouldn't buy that for a second. I feel like I feel like that's really stretching it. Maybe Guy loves they... to stretch the rules. <laughs> See those guns up there. I take those guns up there, and uh, these guys move them down here. That's it. So I give the Dutch a 8.0, so that will average to 8.67. They win the showdown. Everybody play the Dutch Navy. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, the Dutch, that's what they're supposed to be focused on in the game, and uh, as played out in history, they were good at sea. At sea and around the world. Until the next decade or or uh, the next expansion, they aren't going to be so much. No, that's so hot. Well, that was fun. Any other co final comments before we wrap this up? Or in one. You know, I started. I specifically started playing the Dutch when I started playing the game because they were so good at sea and because I didn't have to choose. I'm the kind of guy where if I go to IHOP and they say bacon or sausage, I'd look at them and say yes. I don't like to, I don't like to make decisions. I don't like to have to choose. You know, that's just the kind of person that I am. So when you give me a list that says, "All right, you can do both." I go, "All right, let's do both." That meme from Road to El Dorado, both, both, both. Both is good. And I think that's the final word on that then. For full written reviews of most of these Royal Navy factions as well as pirates and privateer factions, you can go over to bloodandpigment.com and check out all our various articles there. We have articles on ships, nations, factions, terrain, painting guides, battle reports, etc. Go check it out there. This has been another Blood and Pigment Faction Review. Keep your dice ready in the wind at your back. Yahar!